Good morning, church. My name is Kelly. I am one of the lead pastors here at View Church, Tigerberg Hills. Good morning, View Church, Tigerberg Hills. My name is Lindsay, and it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you here this morning to our very first online church service. We really pray that this morning is going to bless you and bless your family. We would firstly just like to thank you for tuning in. We appreciate your time, and we appreciate that you are joining in with View Church, Tiger Brick Hills. If you are experiencing one of our church services for the first time, we would really like to encourage you to click on the link below for a Connect card. A Connect card will give us your information, and we'll be able to contact you so you can feel part of our church community. Even though we are physically apart at the moment, we want you to know that we are not spiritually apart and you do not have to experience this time on your own. So please click on the link. So in this time, we really believe that communication is key. And we have got various platforms that we'd love to connect with you and have you connect with us. So if you could please get onto our Instagram page, our Facebook page, and also our website, it would be a great opportunity for us to stay connected and just to give you information over the next few weeks about how we're going to be doing church and how we'll be meeting. We don't only have church for adults on Sundays, but we are running an online kids' church program. Our kids' church leaders have been working very hard to make sure that your children can continue to grow in their relationship with God. So if you go onto our website and you click onto View Kids, you will find a fully formed lesson for children of three different age groups, and we know it is going to bless your children. We're going to go into a time of worship now, and it may be different to the worship experience that you're used to on a Sunday, but I want to encourage you, the Holy Spirit is still here, and God is still here. You might need to connect in a different way. Perhaps you want to close your eyes, you want to sit quietly, just raise your hands, or find a different room in your house where you feel comfortable. Close the blinds. Whatever's going to make you feel comfortable this morning, we want to encourage you to open your heart and engage in the, with the presence of God this morning. We know He's going to meet you where you are at.
your hidden glory in creation.
us, no weapon forged against us will prosper. And if you are for us, nothing can be against us. And this morning, God, we just receive that. We receive, Lord, that you have a plan and a purpose for us. We receive and we accept that you are for us, God. And we want to live purposely like you are for us. We thank you, God, for who you are. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, We're going to continue our time of worship by going into a time of prayer and praise. And I want to encourage you, the reason why we celebrate praise reports every Sunday is a reminder that if God can move in the life of someone else in my church, someone else in my church family, God can can move in my life too. And it's my prayer and my sincere hope that as you hear these praise reports, you'll be encouraged and you will know that God is going to do something in your life as well. Our first praise report says, thank you, Lord, for my church family who have lavished us with love and care after hearing about my mom's diagnosis. We are humbled and awed. That is amazing. Our second one, thank you, God, that my husband has given his life to you and decided to get baptized after 15 years of prayer. And our last uh, um, praise report is actually one that is personal to me. Um, And I thought that in this time, it would be something that could encourage you. Uh, If you don't know, I've actually, um, I've had an autoimmune illness for about 18 months now. And in August 2018, I ended up in ICU where um, my throat closes and I basically, long story, long story, might uh, act as if I have a severe allergy to certain things. And I've been on medication for 18 months, quite a lot of medication. And at the beginning of this year, uh, Dino and I prayed together. And one of our prayer requests as a family was that I could get off medication in 2020. And uh, as of last Friday, I have been off all medication and I have not had one single reaction. And this is an absolute miracle in my life. And uh, I'm just reminded of a scripture that says uh, the authority of the name of Jesus causes every knee to bow in reverence. Everything and everyone will one day submit to his name in the heavenly realm, in the earthly realm, and in the demonic realm. And every tongue will proclaim in every language, Jesus Christ is Lord. Yahweh bringing glory and honor to God, his Father. And to me, this is just such a testimony that even an illness that doctors couldn't understand, an illness that has been in my life for so long, after prayer, had to submit to the name of Jesus. And I want to encourage you in this time. I know it is fearful, and I know there is illness all around. But if God can do it for me, God can do something in your life as well. And I want to encourage you when you're feeling fearful, And when you don't understand what is happening, pray. Pray. Get friends to pray for you. Um, Get into our online community. Message somebody and get somebody to pray. Uh, That is the testimony of my life. Through prayer, I have been healed. And I'm praying and I'm trusting that God is going to do the same for you and your family. And even as we go into a time of prayer, um, we're going to lift up health and healing. And we're going to lift up people's jobs in this time of uncertainty. And we're going to trust as we pray that God is going to come through for every single member of our church, every family, and every person who's being affected by the coronavirus at this time. Please join me as I pray now. God, we just thank you so much that you are here. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are here. We thank you that we do nothing on our own. Everything we do is with you. You go before us, you go beside us, you go behind us. We are covered by your love, your grace, and your mercy. And God, I just pray in this time that you would be with every single person, God, who is in contact with this virus. God, we pray that it would submit to the name of Jesus. God, we pray that our fear and our anxiety would submit to the name of Jesus. God, we pray for your protection. We pray for miraculous protection for South Africa, miraculous protection for our Tigerberg community, God. And Lord, we pray economically, Lord, that not a single person in our church would st- would struggle for employment. We pray, God, that you could turn this around, that we would come out with amazing testimony because you are God and everything on heaven and on earth submits to your name. God, we thank you in faith for what you are going to do and we thank you for the testimonies that are going to come out of this. In Jesus' name, 
everyone said amen. We're going to finish off our time of praise and worship by giving our tithe and offering. Um, although we can't do it physically this morning, we can do it electronically as we act in obedience. But I want to start by reading a scripture from you from Matthew 6 verse 33. And it says, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. And sometimes everything we want and everything we need might look different. But I want to encourage you today that as we put the kingdom of God first in our prayer life, as we prioritize our Sundays, as we prioritize prayer, as we prioritize being faithful with our tithe, being obedient, we know that God will give us everything we need. And in this time of fear and uncertainty, let's prioritize God. Let's prioritize our obedience to him. As we sow in him, we know we're going to reap. And I want to encourage you today to be faithful with your finance in this time. We know God is going to come through, and we know that God is not surprised by this. We have numerous ways that you can give in this time. And if you are at one of our host parties, or one of our hosts will have more information for you on how to give, and they might be able to present you with a few more options on giving. But otherwise, please click on the link below, and you can give via EFT or SnapScan as you are faithful in this time. I'm just going to pray over the tithe and offering. Uh, dear God, we just thank you so much uh, that you're with us. And Lord, we thank you that as we are obedient and as we put the kingdom of God first, as we sow, we're going to reap eternally, God. We thank you that you're with us. We thank you that you see everyone's hearts and you see everyone's act of obedience in this time. We commit this time to you. Amen. Hey, what's happening, everyone? We want to welcome you to Church Online, our very first online service. We're so excited to be in your home, and we want to thank you for joining us here today. You're part of the family this morning, and we want to make you feel just at home. I just want to give a quick shout-out to all our hosts who have opened up their homes uh, to smaller groups to make sure that this, uh, this whole experience is a family experience. We want you to enjoy this time with us, and we're so grateful that you're with us here today. Well, uh, my name is Dino, and I, I co-lead this church with my beautiful wife named Kelly, and uh, it is our privilege to bring God's Word to you today, and we believe it's going to do something in you and through you because of the time that we spend together this morning. Well, this may be a new way of doing church, but I want to encourage you, we still serve the same God. The Bible says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, tomorrow, and forever. And so because He is the same, we can engage in the same way. And so I want to encourage you, if you usually respond to the Word of God out loud by saying amen, even where you're sitting right now, say amen. The Bible says that the power of life and death lie within the tongue. And so when you begin to speak words over yourself, you're not only describing your presence, you begin to shape your future. And so I can actually recall this one time uh, in my first year of marriage, I was listening to a sermon on a podcast and I was saying amen out loud and Kelly reminded me, the preacher can't hear you, Dino, and to which I replied, well, it wasn't for him, it's really for him, it's for God, it's his word. And I want to encourage you today, amen is not a churchy thing to say, amen is actually a biblical thing to say, it means let it be so with me. And so if there's anything in the text today and you're saying, Dino, I want that for my friends, I want that for my family. I want that for my future. I want to encourage you, respond, say amen, and I believe that you'll be speaking into your future. And so um, I'm going to pray for us this morning. I'm going to pray for your hearts as we receive God's word. We know the seed is good, but I want to pray for the soil of our hearts and uh, trust God to do something supernatural in and through your life. Come on, let's pray today, together today. Lord, we thank you that when the king is present, darkness is absent. We thank you that in your presence is liberty and fullness of joy. Today we declare that there's healing, there's salvation, there's goodness, there's provision. There is faith and not fear that's present because the King is in the room. I pray that you bless each person as we receive your word. Teach us to apply it to our lives in Jesus' mighty name. Say amen. Well, today I'm going to be preaching a word in our Leading in Life series called Breathe on Me. Don't say that to your neighbor because we don't want our neighbors to breathe on us right now. We want the world, uh, the God who created the world rather, to breathe on us. We want the breath of God on our lives. And I just remember earlier this week, I went for a run up Tigerberg Hill and I do it for a number of reasons. One, because I need to lose some more weight, burn the calories, bind them, and then uh, just receive the blessings. Uh, secondly, is because when I go run, I really feel close to God 
mainly because I feel really like I'm going to meet him face to face. I'm dying most of the time anyway, but the real reason why I like enjoying and enjoy running up Tigerberg Hill is uh, because of the view. And uh, we get to see the whole of the northern suburbs. As you run around the hill, that trail, you get to see the greatest city of Cape Town, all of the northern suburbs. And every time I run, I declare God's word over every single home, business, child, and school. The Bible says in Isaiah 55 verse 11 that God's word never comes back empty, never returns void, but accomplishes every single task for which it is sent. And so that's what I do. I send God's word over our families, into our homes, and declare that it does not come back empty, but accomplishes every single task for which it was sent. Our personal theme for the year, our word for the year as a church is higher ground, because the higher you go, the further you can see. One of our key scriptures that I want to share with you this morning is Psalm 65 verse 11, which says that the God that we serve has crowned the year with the harvest, and even the hard ground will overflow in abundance. I want to encourage you, maybe you're feeling like uh, a lot of the nation and really the world today, and you feel like we, we, we're interacting and we are experiencing some hard ground. Well, even in the hard ground, I declare that it will overflow in abundance and God's year of harvest will come to pass. And so um, even as we declare that word, we know it's not going to come back empty. But even as I went for on this run and uh, I was running around Tigerberg Hill, I looked up and I actually saw a couple of eagles, six of them to be exact, and it looks like they were frozen in the sky. They weren't even flapping their wings. They were just like stuck in the sky. And I found that a bit peculiar. I found that a bit weird. They weren't even flapping. They were just there. And then to contrast that picture that I saw and uh, that image, I, I saw a finch, a little small wagging tail, flapping fervently just to get two feet off the ground. And I thought to myself, self, isn't that a bit weird that the eagle is heavier than the finch, but the eagle's not flapping at all? And God really just spoke into my heart, and He just painted this great picture of clarity for me. He just said, when you continue to position yourself in the right places, it doesn't matter the heaviness you carry, I'll keep you in the sky. And that's my encouragement to you today. Even as I found out that it was a thermal updraft, the eagles position themselves to catch the updraft of the wind, not having to flap, not having to fervently keep themselves in the sky. The wind keeps them airborne. And so that's my word for us this morning. When we continue to position ourselves in the breath and the wind of God, we will stay in the air even though sometimes we may feel heavy. And so I've got a couple of points today that I want to share with you this morning. And uh, the first of which uh, is Isaiah 40 verse 31. It said, but those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. Those who trust God in today, in today with this time we face will find new strength. It says, they will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. I receive that word in Jesus' name. They will walk and not be faint. It says that when you trust in God, you're going to receive some new strength. In fact, it goes on to say in 2 Chronicles verse 16, uh, chapter 16 rather from verse 9, it says, For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to Him. Another translation says that God scans the face of the earth right now to see whose hearts would be turned towards them, that he might give them some strength. So if you need some strength today, the Bible says, trust in him, and he's going to give you some new strength. Turn your heart towards him right now, and he's going to pour some strength out in your life. And so I've got three quick points that I want to share with you today to continue to position yourself in the breath and the wind of God. The first point today is that God's Spirit always breathes continuously through the receiving and applying of his word. God is always speaking and breathing through his word. John 6 verse 63 says, the spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I've spoken to you, they are full of life and spirit. They're full of spirit and life. 2 Timothy 3 verse 16 and 17 says like this, all of scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God, that's you and me, may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. It's saying all of Scripture is God-breathed. The breath of God is in Scripture. So when we open up the Bible and we read the text, we are, it's God's breath in written form. In fact, the Word says that God used the dirt of the earth to give Adam form, but gave him his breath to give him life. How many of us have form, but we have not Life. I want to encourage you, the way that you receive the breath of God and continue to position yourself with the wind of God is to receive and apply His Word. 
I'm thinking about the parable of the two men who built two houses, who received the same word but had two different outcomes. The one, they say, built the house in the sand, and the other built the house in the rock. They received the same word but had the different outcome because of what they, not what they knew, but what they did with what they knew. The one who received the word and applied the word was the man who built his house in the rock. I also just want to draw your attention to the fact that just because he applied God's word, it did not stop the storm from coming to his house. It just stopped the storm from breaking through his house. And I want to encourage you today, not just to know God's word, but to apply God's word to your life. And I believe the breath of God, the spirit of God will be on you. And his word says that his words are spirit and life, that you'll have life when you apply it to your world. In fact, Matthew, uh, Mark rather, 13 verse 31 says, heaven and earth will pass away, but his words will never pass away. It's a firm foundation for our feet. Let's build our families on the word of God, on the goodness of God. And even when the things shake around us, even when the storm comes toward us, we'll still be standing on the other side because his word never changes. He is always the same yesterday, today, tomorrow, and forever. My second point, to continue to position yourself with the breath of God, in the presence of God, is to always understand that He's always breathing through His people. The Spirit of God moves through people. I believe that we are always better together. Though there's social distancing right now, I believe we've never been closer spiritually. That the Bible says where there's unity, God commands a blessing and life forevermore. Now, unity isn't just being in the same room or singing the same songs. It's having the same spirit. And I believe that when unity goes up, heaven comes down. Do you know what the realities of heaven are? The Bible says there's no illness, there's no disease, there's no sickness, there's no theft or break-ins or crime. And the Bible says that reality can become our reality. As soon as unity goes up, uh, unity rather goes up, heaven comes down. I'm believing in your home right now, even as we submit to the same spirit, even as we receive the same word, unity would go up in our lives and heaven would come down in our homes. And so we are always better together. We say this at our church, that when everyone brings something, no one lacks anything. Today, I know why you dialed in. You dialed in to receive God's word, but I also want to say, if you've got something to bring, that you're able to add value to someone else's life in your world. You can serve someone else. And as you sow, I believe the Bible says that you shall reap. So instead of sowing fear today, why don't you sow some encouragement? Why don't you sow some scripture? Why don't you tell someone that God is for them, that he's on their side? Instead of sharing fearful posts, why don't you share helpful posts? Why don't you give someone a text and say, I believe God's going to come through for you. As he's come through for me, he can do the same for you. And when we all bring something, no one lacks anything. Galatians 6 verse 2 says it like this, carry each other's burdens and in this way fulfill the Christ, the law of Christ. I want to say that don't carry the season alone. The wonderful thing about being part of a community is that not everyone is facing the same season or find themselves in the same season. Some people are in summer, some people are in winter, some people are autumn, some people are in spring. But I want to encourage you, if you're finding yourself in winter today, there's someone in our community that's in summer that can remind you that the sun is about to rise and it's going to get a bit warmer. Maybe you feel like you're in autumn and things are dying off and you feel like things are slowing down. Someone else is in spring and can give you a new word to say that God can do a new thing in your life. That's the power of community. I believe the power and the beauty of the church is not uniformity, but diversity. And so the gift that God has given you to bring that to the table, and I believe your gift plus my gift and our gifts all together build a strong body and build a better tomorrow. It is always better together. God moves in His people and through His people. And so uh, myself and my son, Zach, we love watching National Geographic together. It's just something we love doing. I don't know if you like and enjoy it, but we really do. And I've shared this story a couple times before, but it's this time where we came across this documentary about penguins. We just really became obsessed about penguins. I think it was really given birth to by watching Happy Feet several million times as a parent of a young child. It's, I've got some cinematic trauma, but that's okay. Jesus will heal me. I believe it by the blood of the lamb. But we like watching documentaries about animals, and this documentary is about penguins. And really just did this documentary about emperor penguins. And they're pretty big. They're a lot bigger than what I thought they were. They're about a, just over a meter tall. I wouldn't take one on. Maybe I would. I don't know. That's neither here nor there, but we'll carry on with the sermon. Don't get distracted. But in this documentary, they, they, they describe the conditions of the Antarctic. 
It's the most harsh conditions in the world. The most crazy conditions. The average of wind speed over 100 kilometers an hour. The average can get down to minus 30, even lower degrees Celsius every single day. And the way that these animals, these, these penguins stay alive, the way that they really thrive is not by going at one by one by one. In fact, they stick together. And the bigger the colony, the greater the chance of survival. And so what they do is they can get into a colony of about four, five, maybe even 5,000 penguins. They put all the big penguins on the outside and all the small young penguins on the inside. They find out what direction the wind is coming from, the coldest direction it comes from. They put all the big ones in, in front of the wind to protect the young ones on the middle. Well, they say it's minus 30 degrees on the outside, but it can get up to 25 degrees Celsius on the inside. Do you know how they survived the most harsh season? It wasn't by changing the scenery, but by sticking together. I want to say this is a season for the church of Jesus Christ to stick together. Maybe you feel like you're on the outside. The penguins are so smart. You spend some time on the outside, and if you're feeling cold, they rotate you on the inside. You spend some time getting warm, big, and strong, and then you go back on the outside and keep the younger ones warm. I want to say that this on online community is a time for us to stick together, to stay warm, and to change not the season by migrating or moving, but actually change the season by sticking together. It's always better together. So the Spirit of God moves in and through His Word. The Spirit of God, the breath of the Lord moves in and through His people. And my final point this morning as we share is that the Spirit of God is always breathing in different ways through different seasons, but for the same purpose. Different ways and different seasons, but it's always for the same purpose. I'm reminded about 1 Chronicles chapter 12 from verse 32. It's about the sons of Issachar. And it says, from the tribe of Issachar, there were 200 leaders of the tribe and their relatives, with their relatives. All these men understood the signs of their times and knew the best course for Israel to take. I want to say that we need to discern the signs of our time so that you can understand what course to take with your family, with your business, with your personal walk with God. I believe that as you ask God to lead you, He will reveal Himself to you. You'll be able to understand what decision you should make in the season. Maybe you're feeling a bit fearful for your family, for your business, for your income. Maybe it's relatives, and we find ourselves in that season. I want to encourage you even now. Say, God, please lead me and guide me. I'm listening to you. I'm leaning into your presence. I want to discern the season and the time. And it says, then they knew what best decision to make and what direction to lead the people. And it actually says that they end, the, they end that story in victory because they could discern the season that they were in. I pray that we would take some time out even now, that we would ask God, say, God, what is the thing you want me to do? What's my next step with you? What do you want me to do in this season, in this time for me, my family, my children, and my friends? What's my next step? I want to see the season so that I can know the best way forward. It continues to say in Proverbs 19 verse 21, many are the plans in a man's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. Now, I know there's been a change of plans. I know things aren't the way that you thought it was always going to be. But it says that when our plans fail, still the Lord's purpose can prevail. And so if we want our plans to continue to prevail, what I need to do is marry my plans with His purpose, because His purpose always prevails. His purpose is that He would receive glory and lost people would come home. This is a season to take your plans, though they may feel, feel like they're dashed or feel like they are delayed, they're to take your plans, marry it with His purpose, and we will see a victory take part and take place in and through your life. His purpose always prevails. And so he's moving in different ways in different seasons. I'm thinking back in Acts chapter 7. The church was under severe persecution. In fact, the first martyr of our faith, Stephen, was, was martyred in Acts chapter 7. And then it starts with Acts chapter 8 with the believers having to flee Jerusalem for their lives. When everyone looked on the outside, it must have looked like the church was breaking because they couldn't gather together in one place. But that account is now called the account of diaspora. And really, that is the catalyst for evangelism around the world. 
because they had to leave the city, they took the gospel that was in their hearts and they spread it all over the known world. And while the world was thinking the church was breaking, the church was actually spreading. The gospel was moving forward. The kingdom of God was being extended. I believe this may be a new season for the church, the new season for the kingdom, and a new season for our world where we don't only depend on gathering together, but we don't come and see, but now we go and collect. We go and share the gospel with all people around the world. I believe that this Sunday, even as hundreds, if not thousands of churches go online to share the gospel, that we would have reached more people for the kingdom of God than at any other stage in human history. I do believe it's a new dawn, it's a new era, and I want us to take place and discern what season we are in. This is a season to share our faith. This is a season to position ourselves under the Word of God, receive His teaching, apply it to our lives. This is a season to actually stick together, encourage one another. And this is most definitely the season to discern what God is doing at this period of time where we take our plans, though they may seem to have changed, and marry them with His purpose. And the Bible says we are guaranteed a victory. And so uh, I remember in 2009, even as we come to an ending as I wrap up our message in a couple moments time in 2009 with the xenophobic attacks we as a church responded with one of the first churches to respond to the need and what we did was we went into a place called Danoon and we would shuttle refugees from that uh, informal sentiment into our church auditorium and we'd fill our cars and shuttle them and my car wasn't the best car but as someone once said you know a second class lift is better than a first class walk can I get an amen and so um, we were shuttling people back and forward, and God spoke to me in that moment as we took in refugee after refugee and child after child and put them inside our auditorium, made sure they were warm and well-fed and prayed for and taken care of, heard and counseled. God spoke to me, and He said, Dino, take a look. The nation is shaking. But I want you to notice that even as society shakes, it seems like the political world is shaking. Even the financial arena is shaking. He reminded me that when the world begins to shake, people will flock to an unshakable place. And I was reminded of a scripture in Psalms 125 verse 1. It says, those who trust in the Lord are as unshakable, as unmovable as the mighty Mount Zion. That when we trust in God, we are truly unshakable. It says in Hebrews 12 verse 27, now this phrase, once and for all clearly indicates the final removal of things that are shaking, that is, the older order. So now only what is unshakable will remain. Since we are receiving our rights to an unshakable kingdom, we should be extremely thankful and offer God the purest worship that delights His heart as we lay down our lives in absolute surrender, filled with awe. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, or perhaps you're not, but you would like to invite Jesus into your heart, in a couple moments' time, I'm going to invite you in to say a prayer. And the Bible says that He takes us from the kingdom of darkness and puts us into the kingdom of light. He says, you now receive the right to be part of an unshakable kingdom, and that now our hearts can be filled with gratitude and thanksgiving, filled with awe and wonder as we thank God and worship Him, as we surrender our lives to Him, because now we are no longer on shaky ground. We are no longer subject to the world. We are in the world, but not of the world. In fact, you may have been born on earth, but the Bible says that you were designed in heaven. Friend, I want to tell you that although it may feel like a lot of things are shaking around you, the Word of God never changes you, and the kingdom of God is unshakable within you. Perhaps if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, in a couple moments, I'm going to invite you in. I want to encourage you to respond in your living room, wherever you're receiving this Word right now. The Bible is not about a man on a stage. It's about a man in heaven who came down to earth, who died not just for us, but died as us, so that we would no longer die for eternity, but that we would live for eternal life. His name is Jesus, and I believe He really lived and really died. I believe He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. The Bible says that He intercedes on your behalf, which means that He's speaking good word over you. And so no matter how many bad words someone has spoken over you, for no matter how many years they've spoken those words, the Bible says that for 24-7, 365, Jesus has spoken a benediction over you. The word benny means good and diction means word. That 24-7, 365, Jesus has been interceding, speaking a benediction over your life. Good words over you. And the Bible says that the Father has been looking out every day for us to come to our senses one day. Perhaps that's your day today. For you to come to your senses, to, for you to return home. Because heaven is our home. 
And I want to encourage you, if this word has touched you, if you believe the Spirit of God is touching you in your heart right now to respond, to pray. Really, my prayer is this. It's to echo the occasion of the servant of Elijah, Elisha rather, in 2 Kings chapter 6, and I'll finish with this. They were surrounded by the enemy. Sometimes, even now, it feels like we're surrounded by problems. It feels like we're surrounded by an overwhelming enemy, and we don't know where to go. And it says from verse 15, when the servant of the, of the man of God got up early the next morning and went outside, there were troops, horses, and chariots everywhere. Oh, sir, what will we do now? The young man cried to Elisha, don't be afraid, Elisha told him, for there are more on our side than on theirs. Then Elisha prayed, O oh Lord, open his eyes and let him see. The Lord opened the eyes of the young man, the young man's eyes, and when he looked up, he saw that the hillside around Elisha was full of horses and chariots of fire. I love the fact that he didn't pray for the chariots to appear. He didn't pray for the army to appear of heaven. He said, just open my eyes to see that they're already there, that there are more for you than can be against you. I want to encourage you where you are right now. There are more of God's army and angels that are for you than any enemy that can be against you. And I want to encourage you to respond to the word of God this morning. And so I'm going to lead us in a prayer. And if you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to pray for you today. Perhaps just echo this prayer in your heart. The Bible says in, in, in Romans 10 verse 9 that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you'll be saved. That means you're saved for eternity in heaven, but also a great destiny on earth. And so in your heart, just pray this prayer with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for saving me. I admit I'm a sinner. I'm not perfect. But right now, I receive you as my Lord, which means my leader, my Savior, which means my Redeemer, and my King, which means I serve Him. Come into my world right now. Let everything change and nothing be the same. Invite the Holy Spirit in. Just say, Holy Spirit, lead me, guide me, show me your ways. And I promise to worship you and serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' mighty name. And we say amen. Well, we call you a party starter. You've just started a party up in heaven. The Bible says there's more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner that, meets, that repents over 99 who don't need to say sorry to God. And so we are so excited. We want to say welcome to the family. Your next step would be to click on the link that's going to come up in a couple moments' time to take that link down engage in it. Give us your details. We'd love to lead you in your next step. If you're at a host party right now, a watch party, your host will help you with your next step, and they'll help you get connected to the house of God. This isn't your final step. This is just the beginning. You've just introduced yourself to the King of Kings. You're a new creation right now. This is a new day and a new dawn. If you're part of the Christian family, I want to say God bless you. Thank you for joining us. We are praying for you this week. If you want to have a prayer request known, we're going to have devotionals happen in the week. We're going to have prayer, live prayer meetings happen online on all our handles, on all the platforms. And so I want to encourage you, engage with us and we can engage with you and we can see this season through as the breath of God, as the Spirit of God leads us and guides us in the season we find ourselves. God bless you and amen.